Hi, everybody. Well, we're back for a second uh, a, a visit. We have a special guest uh, speaker, uh, guest star, John Dowling. He's a musician. He's a financial expert. He knows a lot about things going on in the news and things that most people don't know, but he knows a lot about the dinars. He's studied a bit about the Iraqi dinar. He's uh, he's quite conversant, I'm sure. I, I know you're probably watching XRP and uh Stellar right now are, are kind of lifting off. Uh, I w I expected the market to go down today. Uh, can you? I mean, feel free to, to you know share anything you want to you want to speak about. Well, first of all, Eli, it's great to be back, brother. It's uh, always a pleasure to talk with you. I'm so glad we <clears throat> reconnected last month, and we are getting a continuity here. And it's great to be with your your audience as well, which I know is a very um, if they're anything like you, a compassionate and cogent and uh, very awake audience. So it's always good to to be with like minded uh, brothers. So thanks for having me. <clears throat> My pleasure. I mean, it's always good to, to talk to you. And um, John and I, we we both have Tennessee <laughs> in common or Tennessee. He's heading for Tennessee. I, I kind of I sp I've spent a lot of time in Tennessee. I'm, I'm sending I, I finished a, a song. I just pr uh, produced a song that. Uh, from Nashville, and I'm actually working on a second, a second one down there, and a and a third one in uh, in New York City. So, I'm I'm working a little bit on music. I know you're a musician. Do Do you want to like just jump right in? Would you uh, do, do you want me to ask you questions? I mean, yeah, I, know, I mean, <clears throat> yeah. Go ahead, just shoot away, fire away, and I'll I'll feed off of you. Okay, I mean, what are you seeing like just today? I mean, I expected, yeah. I I heard that there was some kind of new regulation in place where the mm -hmm. banks couldn't bail each other out, or couldn't get bailed out, and that I expected the uh, the market to tank, and it it really didn't. It, it started out low, but then it moved up, and now Bitcoin is uh, uh, not Bitcoin, but uh, XRP is starting to rocket. Uh, Bitcoin has been rocketing. Stellar is also uh, rocketing, and uh, gold is holding steady. I, I just, you know, I, I was wondering if you could shed some light on what. And the the dinar, of course, is something we're all waiting for to to uh, to take off. So, I mean, can you can you kind of like give us some kind of a, a picture of what you what you see is going on? Yeah, certainly. So those are three different issues, but they're all intertwined. So I'll start with the first <clears throat> first one that you mentioned. The uh, Fed had a ELP, an emergency lending program, that officially we got word of it. When I say we, people on my camp know what I mean. For your audience that may not know, I have a team of, of great, amazing men and women, uh, sold out godly Christians who uh, are locking arms with me on the information. So it's not all by means, by any means, my doing. It's it's a collaboration of wonderful people, some of who are versed in <clears throat> some things more than others, some are versed more in currency, other in others in, you know, bonds, others in cryptos. And so what we do is we kind of pool share our share the knowledge together. And I'm just sort of the the de facto figurehead that's sharing a lot of a lot of the information. I mean I do my part, but it's it's I'm part of the bigger collective. So with that in mind, um, we got word when I say we uh, about the uh, ELP emergency lending program was ending officially today, the 11th. And that's interesting, too, Eli, because you and I talk about faith and calendar dates. So this kind of coincides in that separate discussion. Uh, uh, yesterday, last night, officially began the start of Ramadan, which is very interesting because the Iraqis, I'll tie that in to the Iraq part. Uh, the Iraqis typically do that, and so at least the last 11 years I've been in this, they do that in June, traditionally, right? I did it three months ahead. We could speculate as to why that is. I think you and I are of the opinion that they're changing the calendar manipulation and they're slowly, like like with Nasara, they're slowly unwinding that. We'll try to talk about that in a second. Um, they're doing the same thing with the calendar. So there's a lot of things that correlate, but they ended the emergency lending program. What that means is Fed's out of money, they're broke, right? So they don't have the liquidity to go to the banks. Now, you saw last week, or I, again, I don't know your audience where their level of core competency is. So if somebody, of you, some of you already know this, I apologize. I'm just covering a wide range here. But U.S. Bank reported on Santa Surfing last Thursday that, uh, or she reported from them that the U.S. Bank lost 44% of their total market share, right? Then you have Jerome Powell trying to blame 
the commercial real estate market. Like what a horrible cop out that is. You know, I mean, it's like it's not even believable. And, you know, even a kid knows that's nonsense. So you're seeing the old economy, the old swift deep state system just unraveling like a ball of yarn at all these touch points. And we reported also with others that last week, New York City, right in your area, New York Bank Corps, lost 40 percent of their market share on our show with Bill Holter, who's very, very well versed in the financial arena. And uh, so that they've realized over three billion in annualized losses to their stock. We believe the main reason for that is the system is going away. Number one, you have the like we talked about last time on your show, the parallel economies, the old and the new are kind of intersecting. Uh, but that also means that Basel three is doing his job right. And Basel three is a Swiss set of compliance. Basel three is for the tier one banks, your Wells Fargo, your Chase, your Citibank, your U.S. Bank and U, uh, HSBC and the like. Tier two is mostly re designated for um, the smaller banks, your community banks, your credit unions. So they don't have to adhere to, to Basel three. And they do. But the Basel, I, let me rephrase that. But everybody has to do Basel three. Basel four doesn't apply to the smaller tier two banks. That being said, what that means in parlance is that if a bank cannot show transparency of assets with gold and silver physically in hand, they're going bye bye. Right. That's why you're seeing all these central banks trying to buy up gold because they have to pony up to Basel three and they fought against it because they can't they can't uh, use paper to short uh, the precious metals market, specifically gold and silver anymore. So now they have to show their real hand and people are going to see the emperor has no clothes. So that's part of the big Fed program. Uh, I think you asked about Iraq, right? <clears throat> so Iraq is in a good situation. They just announced over the weekend in their articles that they, they are talking about transparency. They have 132 tons of hard cash gold on hand. You have to remember under the ground, under their sand, six feet beneath is with these plates shifting under the ground, you also have um, gold, you have silver, you have phosphorus. They're the world's largest producer of phosphorus. They also have diamonds, a lot more than what they report. So that stuff is constantly coming up, but this is what they have actually mined and and secured, um, you know, above ground to this point that they're reporting. Now, now that they've started Ramadan, interestingly enough, um, we reported last week that uh, uh, President Macron of France and President Erdogan of Turkey, you reverse Erdogan, that means red dragon. You can read into that how you want. They are coming to Iraq uh, as of right now, March thirty first. What's March thirty first? Easter, or Ishtar. Not that we celebrate it anymore, but just just saying it's a monumental date. That's another thing. Usually Easter is in April. That's gotten bumped up. We had daylight savings time bumped up. So there we go with the calendar manipulation once again. So they're coming basically for all intents and purposes first week of April. Why are they coming? They're coming to sign off on the taxes and tariffs on the borders, all the reforms and the ever vaunted HCL, hydrocarbon law, Article 140. And for those who don't know, that's divvying up the dividends of the oil credits to all the Iraqi citizens who live there and also the different factions, the Kurds, the Shiites, the Sunnis. Kurds are really hurting because in this three-year budget, they didn't get a really, they got a raw deal to try to get that three-year budget and they didn't fight for it enough. So now they're going to have to grovel a little bit, unfortunately, but <clears throat> ostensibly that HCL law will start to divvy up the oil credits out to those different groups I mentioned on an annualized basis because the people there are starving. It's it's a bad situation. They're just now starting to trust the banks because we're getting uh, the monopoly. It used to be Rashidi and Rafid Bank, and now that's being broken up. You got JP Morgan. There's, I think, ASYUDA, Asyuda Bank is another one. There's like four or five uh, that are now starting to come to the forefront to break up that monopoly, and it's to engender trust to the Iraqi citizens to start to do business, right? Because you have to remember, technically, as of January 1st, dollars are no longer being allowed in and out of country for, for new business members or for, you know, the citizens going forward to discourage, you know, the living off the dollar. Because that's where, you know, the, the Iranian proxies that are hosting in their government, not unlike the corrupt people that are in ours now, quote unquote, again, they copy each other. So you've got that happening first week. Once that's done, which is merely a formality, these guys can get that signed in a heartbeat, you know. And then Sudani has already made plans to go out to the U.S. to make his intentions know, known of two key things. One, that they are officially returning to the international stage and they don't need 
the same militaristic support from the U.S. or other countries that they once needed. It'll be more of a redundancy thing. Two, uh, that he's going to have Janine Planchette. Janine Planchette is the U.N. ambassador to Iraq for foreign relations. She's the intermediary. And he's going to ask her permission to flip the switch to uh, add purchasing power dramatically to the dinar. And, of course, she will oblige because on her legacy, she leaves in May, and she wants this on her legacy before she leaves. So and we're not giving dates and rates, but we're just giving you a foretelling of what we see that's actually been put in articles, that's actually been verified, and then we just watch to see how the details you know, thereof play out. So that's what's going on with the Fed program. And in Iraq, I think you asked about uh, cryptocurrencies. Yes, so I'm trying to remember all the stuff you asked me. It's a lot of information. Um, the third part is, uh, Eli, that, um, yes, the, the market's up um, marginally. Let me take a look at it right now in real time just to give your viewers an example. Right now it's at like 46.97. I mean, that's basically Mendoza line. It's not doing much. But what's interesting is money has been flowing out of the markets into the cryptocurrencies, right? You mentioned Bitcoin. Let's take a look at that. Bitcoin. I, has I, I can actually show it if, if, you, you, yeah. Know, if you want. Yeah, it'd be um, great. That'd be awesome. you'd like you'd like to, okay so let's let's take a look at the market um quickly sure Th this is the one i used uh just so it's the dow's up like 46 right can, right can, can you see that i see it yeah 46.97 okay. yep okay so um then um let me go back to let's check out bitcoin bitcoin i see eli is 72 156 57 right so let's, about three it's under four percent Okay, so we could take a look at it. Uh, it on the, it, this is one day. Let's see, five day. You could see how it it uh, you know so big green candle. You, you you would you would call that um, a commercial investing? I mean, the big guys jumping in at once. What 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 does a, a huge candle like that mean to you? The whales, the whales are buying it typically uh -huh. is what that means uh -huh. because uh -huh. they're they're leveraging it. But what the good thing about what Bitcoin represents for us with respect to XRP and the other aforementioned cryptos we talked about, right? Uh, or we, I should say we will talk about XRP, XLM, XTC, Shiba, things like that. It's moving because of Bitcoin. It's now trickling down into the other ones. So we're on what's called a mini bull cycle here from now until the end of the month. So one tip that I'll give your viewers is I'm fairly invested in Shiba Inu. That is a decentralized platform. They're calling it the Shibaverse. It's like XRP in the sense that it will compete with Ethereum, who's pretty much been the monopoly at this point. You had to buy Ethereum, buy other stuff. If you buy XRP, you already know that. It can be expensive <clears throat> with the gas fees. So it gives investors a chance to delineate away from the monopoly and break free. Um, we're watching Shiba very closely to see if it drops a couple of zeros to point. The target number we're hearing is 0.0088. That's less than less than eight, just slightly under eight, eight point eight tenths of a penny. But if you have enough Shiba, that could be formidable. You know, I mean, it's if you bought in a while ago, that that could be a nice cash out. And then what we see, Eli, Eli is going into October this year into April, May next year, the Super Bowl run cycle. I don't know if you saw it today, but President Trump is now starting to get behind cryptocurrencies, which I thought was pretty telling. He's now starting to acknowledge Bitcoin. So we see Bitcoin going, um, Cliff High has done the data analytics on it, like him or not, regardless, he's called a lot of things. He's calling between 80 to 100,000 for, for Bitcoin in this. And then it'll start to bottom down at that point, what we're going to do when I say we, the team, not financial advisors, not giving financial advice, just telling information of what we are what we are seeing play out on our side, is Bitcoin is going to go uh, down to almost nothing. You can buy that dip, right? Swing trade it and get it, catch it on the up for the end of this year and the next year, where it could go easily in the upper six figures or more. So that's going to be, you know, this is a great time for God's people, Eli, to really capitalize on the on the wealth transfer. Well, what about, um, let me just show you the chart for XRP as well mm -hmm. while Please. we're here. Let's see. Okay, we'll go to XRP because today it, it seemed to be going uh, steadily up. Yeah, here's, this is the uh, one day. Um, it's up to about like, yeah, 70 74 i guess 74 or 73 73 56 yep 
in in terms of um let me go back in terms of uh usability of pract- practicality of uh, you know a, of a coin having a a, a function to it mm-hmm. When you compare Bitcoin to something like XRP, XRP is like a banker's coin. I mean, XLM is also a, a kind of a currency coin. You could trade across borders without having the uh, SWIFT system. Is there a point at which Bitcoin becomes a, the old dinosaur and XRP and XLM or Shiba, as you say, will uh will reverse, they will kind of reverse positions. Is that a possibility? Well, I see them as mutually exclusive in the aspect that um, XRP, XLM, XDC, those are stable coins, ISO 20022, right? Um, <clears throat> you know, you could make a case, interestingly enough, for whether Bitcoin will um, possibly become a stable coin in the future. I mean, I'm, we're just we're just speculating here, but it'd be interesting to see if that happens. But right now, none of them are supported by hard assets, but that will change in the future. Now, let's key on an XRP for a moment. In April, from what we're hearing, their case with the SEC is supposed to be done, and they're supposed to win that outright. And we're looking at it to start to move between $15 and $30 to start, and then it'll just, you know, moon up from that point. Um, I've heard different numbers on that. Some are saying $1,000. Some are saying $25 to $50. You know, I mean, you have gold move. Gold is we already see gold. Let's let's talk about we're talking about precious metals, Eli. So let's talk about that for a second. Um, gold is moving up pretty solidly as of this morning. We can look at that as well. Uh, it was this morning we reported it was twenty one ninety five forty. It was up ten dollars and fifty three cents. And silver, which we all agree is big, uh, twenty four sixty eight as of this morning. Uh, we can take a look and see what it is in real time now. Twenty one eighty seven. So. It's only moved down about seven, eight bucks, but it's still up pretty handily. Uh, so silver is starting to get close to the target we're watching, which is between 25 and 30. Once it hits over that, and, and there was a report, um, I keep going on my phone, you have to forgive me, but I'm trying to keep up with all the information here. Um, so it was reported on our show, CNBC is saying that uh, gold prices will keep climbing, but look for silver to steal the show before long. And for those who already know, there's a very specific reason. First of all, gold, there's more gold than silver, right? So it can stabilize the economy, right? That's why Q said gold shall destroy the Fed. Inside of that, there's a finite amount of silver, and it's used in every virtual, every aspect of manufacturing, right? So there's going to be a run on that. So even if you can get silver at a good price, you have to consider the delivery aspect. Can you take delivery on it? How are you going to take delivery on it? And that comes down to who you're dealing with in terms of vendors, whether it's a local trusted coin dealer or a big dealer like a JM Bullion. You have to, you know, I like using both because it's nice to have somebody down the street. You can get quick access, but if they don't have the supply and you can actually take delivery from a larger dealer like a, like a JM Bullion, for example, that's a good thing. It, giving yourself diversification of options. But silver is going to be the main play. But as gold moves up, it will take silver with it. Just like it, likening Bitcoin, uh, crypto, as Bitcoin goes up, it will take some of these other stable coins and, and meme coins like Shiba with them. So this is an exciting month while we it's almost like a, it's a it's a wealth transfer, but it's almost like an appetizer to the currencies because we can get some good profits for God's people this month while we wait for the stage being set for, you know, April, May for Iraq, as an example. Right. So so you could do a currency exchange. Well, one question I have about the Iraqi uh, dinar is that um, it, it <clears throat> rep- it's go- going to be gold back. So if if I was, let's say the, the Iraqi dinar goes up to a dollar or three dollars, I mean, they're saying three dollars. That that would be worth a lot of fiat uh, that you could trade it in for quite a bit of fiat. But is it really worth it to trade it in if if it's really backed by gold? Well, firstly, let me answer that, Eli, in a couple ways. And and I I apologize. I don't mean to be overly verbose. I just want to give you enough detail for your audience. No, we we appreciate it. We we need the details. Hope your audience is like, shut that guy up. (laughs) No, 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 no. They're very into this. I appreciate it. I, I try to be succinct is my point. It's just, there's a lot of information to unpack and I, I try to do it as succinctly as possible. So 
let's that's two separate questions. Let's just take if it's okay with you, my my brain I have to take them one at a time. Okay, so firstly, again, we don't do dates and rates. We're looking at information and puzzle pieces, but let's establish what we do know. We publish this on our Telegram channel. I think if you're on it, you can see all the articles we post quite a bit every day. Um, they have actually said about six weeks ago that they're going back to the pricing of the 1940s. What does that mean? When we look back and research it, that the price back then was four dollars and seven cents. Now you have to adjust. When you say they, meaning the, the Iraqi, the Iraqi, 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 Iraqi okay. government has said uh, that they're going back to 1940s pricing, presupposing they're telling the truth. Because a lot of times they're not. But let's just let's just table that for a minute and let's take it at face value, right? Let's say that they're accurate. What were the pricing back then? We research it. You can go on a simple Brave or, you know, whatever, whatever search engine you like. Um, and, and you can go and you can see that the pricing back then was $4.07. So now you have to adjust it for today's rate of inflation. In fact, I will tell you, Eli, interestingly enough, I learned in this journey. Did you know that when Saddam Hussein was a little kid in the, what, 50s, I think, uh, the dinar was over $5.00. So they're going back to basics. And then, but the difference is this time it's going on a digital platform. It's going to be asset backed. It's not going to be solely gold. It'll be gold. It'll be oil, phosphorus, and many other things, diamonds, other things that they organically produce in the ground. Remember Trump said level playing field, referring to assets in the ground one to one, evening things out. So it's fair for trade and commerce, right? So they're going to be asset backed, not solely by gold, but partially. And that's going to stabilize the rate as it free floats up. The market will determine what the value will be this time. And because it's like a, a slingshot, it's been suppressed for so long, has to boomerang the other way. So that's kind of my answer to both your questions. So, OK, so uh, uh, so in other words, you're saying it boomerang, meaning it, it, it'll be let's say it goes back. Let's say it goes to three dollars that you can okay. Exchange in Iraqi dinar for th uh, three uh, three dollars. Right. Is it is it worth going to the bank and getting a bunch of fiat when you can hold on to the dinar and just know that it's asset backed? Yeah, I apologize for not getting to that question. Forgive me. There's again, I was trying to a lot to cover. So thanks for circling back to that. Um, that's a discretion thing you have to decide. I can't tell you definitively yes or no, but I can tell you this. Um, there, you're going to see stuff going on in the Red Sea with supply chain issues. You're already starting to see it with the Houthis. You're going to see the Iranians get inflamed and provoked more and more. We haven't seen Israel make their move yet with the grave surrender or the grave mistake, I should say, hitting the secret nuclear power plants of Iran, which will in turn create the grave surrender. When those events happen, all these wealthy uh, foreign countries of all types, sundry types, will shoot all those dollars back. And what I think we're going to see, Eli, as you probably remember, uh, I certainly don't, I heard about it, but you could confirm this, you were around, I think in the seventies, right? And we had a period where, when we took ourselves off, Nixon with Kissinger took us off the gold standard. There was a period of time, I don't know what it was, two, three months, I guess, where the dollar had this hyperinflated sense of value. People's homes went up and you know, your salaries went up and everybody was like a drug. And like, oh, this is great. You know, X-22 talks about that all the time. And then when that drug wore off, we know what happened, hyperinflation. We're going to see that repeat again. So I would submit to your question, you could hold on to it. But my humble recommendation of what I'm going to do is, you know, exchange those dinars for physical assets that you can tangibly hold, gold and silver, land, seeds, weapons, if you like, the the the, the, the bullets, the munition are, have, you know, metals, they have silver and brass in them. So it's another redundancy of precious metals, uh, heirloom seeds, grow your own food. You know, in our cases, musicians, classic, uh, pianos, old Steinways, classic cars, um, you know, fine arts, Picasso's, Monet's, things like that. Forbes, uh, about 20 some odd years ago, 25 years ago, interviewed some of the richest families of the 20th century. And they asked them, how have you kept your wealth? And they said three things, real estate, precious metals, and fine arts. And the interviewer said, why? And they said, well, the worst case happened. We could grab the deed. We could grab the paintings. We could grab the metals and go and start again. So I think we do well to learn from their tutelage of what has served the wealthy in the past. Now, we know the wealth of the wicked is being laid up for the righteous, but it's still good to take wisdom where you can and discernment. 
So uh, to your question, I would submit just, I would exchange and get into physical assets that you were going to get into anyway. You can ask the bank if you're able to trade those currencies for uh, precious metals and see what kind of response you get. So take the temperature, I guess, once you get there. You're saying the banks themselves might trade, might might uh, produce? That's the, that's the discussion that I've heard. A militia man a few weeks ago had somebody who was talking to JP Morgan and they cogently asked, hey, I have a question. This was one of the higher upside, from what I understand, at the, I wasn't there obviously, but my understanding of the conversation was it was a higher up regional director and said, hey, I have an out of the box question. The guy's like, sure. He's like, can we exchange the dinars for precious metals? And he said, that's a good question. Let me find out. So it, at least it sounds like it's open for discussion. And if it is, then that solves your concern about that. Right. So you could go directly to the bank and just come back with, with precious metals. That's, that's the offer on the table. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. I, I think, um, I, I, I think what it was, what about, um, this ISO 222, when does that take effect? Well, it's already, it's already happened behind the scenes. It's just got to roll out. Um, I think a good marker would be when you see the XRP case gets, uh, get, I don't even think there's going to be a settlement. I think it'll just, they'll just win outright. I think when that happens, that's going to be a big clue or demarcation to seeing ISO 20022 roll out. Interestingly enough, Eli, that you asked these questions because that was something I was trying to queue up on the information, if you just bear with me a second, sure. um, a lot of information to go through today here. Where was it? Uh, here we go. Um, according to TV Brick, South Africa Sherpa is talking to 34 more countries expressing interest to come join Brics. That's on. That's in addition to the 30 or 40 that are already queued up. Now, last week, uh, I think it was um, Nigeria. It wants to get into the BRICS. What's Nigeria close to? Zimbabwe. Another big clue. That's a country we need to be watching for this summer because they have elections coming up. And Chimisa, who's a Christian, has already said, like Trump, I, the first three things I'm going to do day one when I'm back in office, restore the sovereignty of the people, remove corruption, and return gold to all existing monetary supplements. That means the bonds and the Zim dollars are going to be hydrated in gold. And they've already said in articles that we've shared that they are going to back their, their money in gold. So it's, that's a huge sign. Yeah, that could be pretty exciting. So, and uh, the, what about the Vietnamese uh, dong? Is that also in play? Oh yeah. Boy, man, it's like you're reading my mind. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So once we see the dinar happen, Eli, what we, what we surmise will happen, not guaranteed obviously, but we see a likely a degree of probability is once we see the cryptos this month, once we see Iraq make their intention next month to come on the international stage, once Sudani comes back from the U.S., Maliki, who's an Obama Sortero holdover, is going to go absolutely nuts because now they can't launder money anymore. Their their drug is they're totally their fix is coming, and they, they you know they're 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 uh, they have to have to quit cold turkey, and they don't want to do that. Nobody wants to give up, especially in evil, their power. But they're gonna it's gonna happen forcibly. You're going to see all that showdown. You're going to see Israel at some point make their move. I would say that I'm watching. My gut tells me sometime in May, I'm watching for China, Taiwan to happen, because when that quote unquote conflict happens, that's going to be the good side freeing up Vietnam enough from communism to bring out their dong, their Vietnamese dong in silver and Litecoin. And also they have a lot more gold and oil than they talk about. Uh, which they don't talk about. They're a very secretive uh, country. Um, I dealt with a Vietnamese investor years ago, and they keep their clo- their cards very close to the vest. They'd be great poker players if they decided to do that. <laughs> no, truly, they would. I mean, you can't get anything out of them. They're very, very uh, tight-lipped. But once China-Taiwan happens, that's when I think you'll see the dong make its move. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and uh, and w- you're predicting April for the, uh, you're not saying the dinars are going to be necessarily revalued by then, but but politically they'll be in a position to uh, to 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 change the uh, the valuation of the uh, dinar in, in April. Well, to be clear, I just want to be precise about this so I get this just right. Yeah, I'm not, we're not predicting dates and rates or anything, but what I'm saying is you will see 
Sudani in the U.S., make his declaration. Then we need to be watching because let's talk about the other side of Ramadan. When does it end? Well, Eid al-Fatar is the end of the Ramadan period. That's April 9th. So April 10th for them would be still April 9th for us because they're, I don't know, what are they, like 10, 12 hours ahead or something like that, I, depending on where you are in the country. Um, it's basically a month from now, right? So once April 10th goes, I would say that's that week is when Maliki's going to flip his lid and you're going to see a showdown of good and evil. And then it's just a matter of time from there. I would be watching rough timelines. I'd be watching between April and May. Because again, once Israel makes their mark, it's according to the prophecy of Kim Clement, which we believe in, it's days to weeks from that point. So you can do the math how you want, but I would say mid-April is a good timeline to watch the drama unfold and see how it plays out. Right. You know, I, I, I didn't mention this, but it, today is the first day of the second month of Adar on the Jewish calendar. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, you know, I know it's, it's 11, you could, there's, you could say 11.3 is today, you know, the, if you reverse the, uh, the date, right. but it's also uh, the, the first day of the, we have two months of Adar this year, and that's the month of Purim, which is a, you know, a, a, a celebration of a victory within, within the confines of nature. There's, there's no open miracles in, in the Purim story. Everything is like, the miracles are, you know, cl clearly divine providence that takes place. Just like, I mean, what we're seeing now, and, and I think, I think that's, you know, I've, I've always kind of said that, that I feel that, uh, that this whole, the, the, the big picture has to play out pretty much within the confines of nature. Like I, I don't see, you know, I don't see star personally, I don't see, you know, spaceships coming down or huge, you know, declarations or, you right. know, con continents falling into the sea. A lot of people are saying California is about to fall into the sea and this kind of thing. Uh, I, I don't see that. I think that everything is going to, and I think that's kind of like the, the brilliance of the white hats and the, mm -hmm. and the, um, a continuity of government uh, action that everything is kind of like, you know, it, it, we're all waiting for these colossal events and it, it's kind of like just sort of tamely rolling itself out. Yeah. I mean, any analogy you like you can use, it's like watching a flag fly back down off the wind or a snake unwinding itself for a fishing line, however, you, whatever analogy you visually want to use. It's, it's definitely a process. And that's why, you know, there's a lot of frustration with the community because we take for granted that God gave us the grace to remove the scales from our eyes and ears to see it. He gave us that before other people. So we get impatient. Well, we see it. Why don't they? But we have to remember we were blind and now we see it's the same thing. We have to have compassion the way he gave for us to, to us to have it, to give it to other normies out there who don't see it. Um, I'm reading one of your comments on live from Sarah about Kuwait revalued during Ramadan. Yeah, they did. That doesn't mean that precludes that history is going to repeat itself. It could. Sure. I mean, hey, I'm look, I'd be the first to tell you, I'd love it to be this month. I would have loved it to have been a long time ago, but we're not in control of that. That's this is God's timing and he's going to roll it out in the perfect time. But I'll be I'll tell you this. We'll be darn glad we have the dinar because 99% don't, 99% don't even know about it. Don't believe me? Go talk to your family. Go talk to society. Um, do you remember that video, Eli, with Mark Dice about seven years ago? He went on the streets of San Diego. Uh, he's a conservative comedian, and you can look him on YouTube. And he started handing out, he, he had a pl two platters. On the left, um, he had uh, 10 ounce bars of Hershey's chocolate. And on the other side, it was 10 ounce bars of silver. Do you know not one person took the silver? Not one. That's amazing. I mean, I, if I were there, I'd been like, I'll take the free one. I'll buy all the rest off that. You name your price. <laughs> yeah. 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 People don't really understand uh, value. And I, and I think that's, that's a really key point also that, hmm. The, the, you know, and, and it, it goes in with the like kind of religious thought is that we live in an upside down world right now. But as soon mm -hmm. as the godly values are restored, things will naturally move into, you know, some kind of a, a state of justice, a state of, you know, where good, good wins, this, this kind of thing that right now it, it's pretty hard for that to happen.
Yeah. If just a couple of quick, if it's okay with you, Eli, just yeah, to, please, you're, please. You're, the, you're the man. I no, just no, a couple no. Of, <laughs> <laughs> a couple of quick touch points. I just want to throw on the backs of what you were saying, because yeah. you're right. Yeah, yeah. It, is, it is about wisdom and discernment. Um, I just don't want to forget to tell your audience this. Um, it's very important people understand this is going on a digital asset back platform. People know that, but they may not realize the full significance. The reason that's so important is the market dictates the value. It's like this. You've got the worst home on the best block. Now you've gone in, you've flipped it, remodeled it. Now it's the best home on the best block. So you bought it at a very low price point, and now you can sell it at a very high price point, and people want to get in. It's a bidding war, supply and demand. So you having it on that digital platform, people don't need to go chase contract rates. They don't need to try to get sweetheart deals and buddy up. The rate, whatever it is, it's going to be, I know it's going to be really good. I don't know exactly what it is, but I know it's going to be very good. I've heard certain things. I'm just letting God surprise us. So I would just recommend people just do their best to sit back, take a deep breath, trust God, trust his timing in this process. He Jer, what does Jeremiah 29, 11 say? For, um, for you know the plans I have for you, my son or daughter, plans to prosper you, plans for a hope and a future, not plans to harm you. So why would he want to hurt us when it's his blessing? He's, it's going to be really good, whatever it is, is my point. Tom Morris just put a thing on TikTok we put on our, uh, on our uh, Telegram channel, which I'll, I'll tell you later if you're interested, um, that people are starting to, to, to you know, uh, not pay taxes. Um, well, meaning people were revolting because they're tired of the money going to Ukraine and all the money laundering and people wake up and saying, well, what are we doing this for? Which is a really great sign, right? Uh, Trump is killing big tech with Facebook, with TikTok. That's that article 230. He's really starting to speak out against them. And uh, you know, also, I'm sure you know about Mike Lindell. Apparently this Friday, he's going before the Supreme Court. Apparently they have all this factual confirm 100% information that we already know that the election was fraudulent and stolen to return President Trump back. So we'll see if, you know, they're going to hear that case and what the outcome is going to be. But President Trump winning 9-0 last week, I think, was a really good sign for subsequent cases like this coming out. And then I don't know if you heard this, uh, Eli, but um, Pennsylvania, if you live in Pittsburgh, we broke this news this morning. If you live in Pittsburgh, uh, the police are now telling this, the residents there if you have a burglary or your alarm goes off or allegations of rape or rape, they will not come out because they're underfunded and understaffed because the corporation is broke. And this isn't going to stop at Pittsburgh. This is going to probably go to Chicago, Miami, New York, Los Angeles. It's going to make its way around. This is unfortunately part of what's needed for the wake up operation to see just how broke the corporation is and to get people who are fed up awake and taking action. Right. Um, do you think XRP will moon the same time the RV happens? Well, again, Sarah, the uh, XRP case we're watching for is in April. Once that gets rescinded and removed, um, there's a very good possible, it's a good question. There's a possibly, yes, there's a good chance that they could uh, coincide with the, the RV or the RI. Because remember, Iraq and Vietnam are going to be reinstatements. They've already been here before. Other countries will RV. But yes, they could they could go together as part of the new digital system. So, well, and uh, I just I just want to clarify when you talk about the, the digital thing being kind of like a a level playing field, you're just saying in general that people will be able to use the new digital economy. And I mean, really, we already can, I think, um, to to trade <clears throat> and such. Well, yeah, I'm I, I'm saying it's good and bad, right? I mean, for God's people, for the next. Because Trump is not going to let CBDCs happen here, right? right. It'll, they'll, they're already pushing it overseas right now in Australia and I'm sure some European countries. Um, while he's in place, it's for the next four or five years, it's a very good time for Americans and specifically God's people to get into safe cities. Excuse me, not safe cities, safe land out of the cities, I meant to say. Pardon me. Uh, like we're talking about, right? Like Tennessee is a great place. Tennessee, man, they're just, they're killing it. I mean, have you seen what they're doing with their legislation? No, they're removing I, pride I, flags out of the schools. They're uh -huh. removing geothermal, uh, basically DARPA and chemtrails are no longer allowed. No. Wow, um, that's nice. This is, yeah. I'm not trying to offend anybody. I'm just 
just as a Christian, this is a big deal to me. They're banning same-sex marriage. Um, so they're really taking a traditional stand, hard stance for, for God's uh, faith and hit for his, his, his commandments. And they're also going to be doing a, talking about the digital, they're, they're doing a digital asset-backed coin, right? So is Texas. So is probably 35 or four of the other states. But Tennessee is, you know, getting ahead of it. Um, I'm really proud of them for that on, on multiple levels. So in the short term, uh, digital is very good for us because we can take advantage of these dips in the crypto market, right? Uh, it wouldn't be something I would do long term, but in the short term, three to five years, it's it's a it's a feast time before the famine comes. Right. Well, well I mean, I, I'm not familiar with this fa famine. Is this part of a Christian uh, prophecy yeah. or? Yeah, I should I should clarify. Sorry. Yes, in in uh, Leviticus and in Genesis, the Joseph period. There was uh, seven years of plenty and there was seven years of uh, famine. We uh -huh. as Christians believe that we're coming into that period uh, before the tribulation, whereby we're going to have, um, I believe we're going to have about six years now of plenty. And then Agenda 2030, they're going to, they're just going to keep trying to push that. So, it, you know, will it succeed? I'm praying that God gives us more time, right? That was a prayer of many people, Abraham with his son. You know that better than anybody. Um, I'm praying that God will give us more time uh, because there's a lot of people who don't know anything about what we're what we know or are talking about. So I, I'm praying that God will be merciful on the whole of His people and give as many people a chance to be protected before that that time happens. But that's that's what we're referring to. Uh huh. Interesting. Yeah, I, I never heard that. I mean, yeah, in our in our like philosophy, it seems like once the redemption begins, we're, we're good to go. So it, it's a little bit different, but yeah, that's, I, I love that story. I love the whole, um, the narrative with Joseph. That's one of my favorite stories in, uh, yeah, in the book, too. thrown into jail and then he ends up running the place. So yeah, that's, 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 that might be a good uh, parallel for, for all of us. I mean, we've been, you know, we uh, like, I lost my job. I mean, I, we've all been shifted around and at the end of oh, the yeah. day, let's hope we end up, uh, you know, being in, in a position of power so that we can help the others. I don't, I don't see it as like, you know, that we're going to become the future elites. I think we'll, we will become, you know, the just people that the planet really deserves to have running the place. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Eli, you and I have had healthy conversations and discourse about our faith and respect and, you know, deep dialogue. And that's one of the things I love about our friendship, you know, whether you're Christian or Jewish or whatever, um, at the end of the day, we're here to serve God and his people we're, we're to help the poor, the lonely, the hungry, the needy. And the cool thing about it is that God gives us different talents. He gave you a lot of talents. He gave these people online a lot of talents. No two are the same. We might be complimentary, but not the same. So we get to have fun and be creative with how we do this, right? It doesn't have to be a set rote way. We can, we can flow as, the, as things happen, right? And so remember, when we talk about, to your point about um, we're good to go, Yes, you're talking about a thousand years of peace, but remember, one day is a thousand years to God. So time doesn't mean anything to him like it means to us, because time is a man-made construct. So whether we have a thousand years, a hundred years, 20 years, let's just make the most of what we've got and help each other. It's as simple as that. Amen. Be beautifully put. Um, yeah, Sar Sarah's saying humanitarian projects. Yeah, and I, and I, I don't yeah. think humanitarian projects necessarily need to be... Uh, administrated I, I think it can be you know we we all know we all can do it without having somebody tell us okay that's cool you can do that but yeah exactly. so john um tell 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 my people how they can uh stay and stay in touch with you or how how they can see your broadcasts sure before i do that just let me if i if i may just add to you what you said because it's a very important point you are your own kingdom humanitarian project. We don't need permission right. for God's money. He, it comes from him. No man can tell us what we can do with it. Now, what we do with it will be judged by God if we squandered it or we used it wisely. I, I'm likening the, uh, the Matthew 25, if you remember that story, the man with the three talents. He gave, the real quick story is in Matthew 25, 15, he gives three different men a series of talents. The first guy he gave, I don't know, five or 10 talents. And the second guy, he gave the same. And the third person, he gave one. It sounds like a punchline joke, but it's really not. <laughs> and Jesus says, I will come back at a later time and see you know, what you did. 
So he comes back. The first guy's like, what'd you do? He's like, well, I did this. I did this. Okay, great. Here's 10 talents. Off you go. Second guy, basically the same thing. Third guy, he had one talent. He said, what'd you do? He said, well, I, I thought about going to a bank, but instead to protect your money, I buried it in the ground. He's like, you fool. I could have put that in the bank. Not today, but back then make interest on it. So he took that talent away from the guy and he gave it to somebody else. Don't be that third guy who squanders it. That's the moral of the story. And I don't think any of your audience will, but it's just important to denote. So with that in mind, they can find me in a few different places. I have a Telegram channel, John Dowling in the real world. Um, they can find me on Rumble at my name, John Dowling. They can find me at YouTube, John Dowling and Chris, C-H-R-I-S, real world. And same thing under BitChute. And then we're also creating, Eli, a uh, pretty cool little thing. It's called the Patriot Club. It's kind of a 1% club. And it's got two different sort of brains to it. The first thing is it's a free uh, chat room where patriots like this can come in. It's kind of like a discord. People can come in, share like-minded ideas, help each other with solutions to different complimentary challenges they have. Then there's a business side if people want to start a business or they want to do income streams from home, get out of their job, or if they want to meet with other business owners and uh, let's say you have a part of your whatever humanitarian creative product. Let's say you have a product, but you need you know expertise and guidance from other business owners who have been there. You can do that and do channel partnerships. Uh, so there's a lot of great aspects within this. But then go to Patriot Club, pa pa what it sounds, PatriotClub.com, and they can join that for free and get started. That's beautiful. So you have a lot of platforms, and I, I just I just want to add uh, to all my peeps that. Um, yeah, Thank you know, you. Christians and Jews can have very nice conversations. We're friends, and yeah. uh, it's not a problem. You know, and I'm I'm learning uh, some things. I you say well, we don't read. I don't know who Matthew is, so it's you know, it's, <laughs> right kind of news. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's it's good to know this stuff. But, um, sure. but yeah. So okay. So, um, any any final comments you want to make or? Yeah. Thank you again. First of all, thanks for having me. It's a privilege. It's a privilege to be your friend privileged to be your brother in this movement. I've always enjoyed our time together on your YouTube. And, and I look forward to us having these conversations on a monthly basis because it's yeah. going to get better and better. Absolutely. And, absolutely. And, and to your last comment, um, yes, as Christians, we are we are grandfathered in to, to the Jews, thanks to the Lord, thanks to Yeshua. So we are to honor our Israeli brothers and sisters, the true Jews in Israel, and support and honor you because you are the founding nation. So um, we, we owe a great deal of gratitude to you. So, um, that's pretty much it. Cool. And I, and I hope in the future that, um, that all, you know, I mean, it, it, my Rebbe, uh, you know, I'm a Hasidic, uh, Jew. My Rebbe was very interested in, uh, in different traditions, reaching out to each other and, and speaking together. So I, I, I think it's a, I think that, that uh, the internet really gives us a tremendous, uh, resource mm -hmm. for communication. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so yeah, let's let's do this on a regular basis. I think I can see that everybody's really enjoying it, and um, yeah, that's that's it. Just we'll we'll talk to you soon. I'll, um, I'll just think, is there anything I'm forgetting? Usually, like at the end, is there something I should do, or I should think of anything. I have my girlfriend; <laughs> she reminds me, oh, you forgot to do this. Or, <laughs> but hopefully, I did everything, and um, it was really a pleasure. And let, let's just do it often. I really, I'm really enjoying it. I'll send, I'll send you the, the uh, a copy of this tape. And uh, oh, do I have your email? I'll send it to you offline. I'll send, okay, I'll send, send, send me send me your email to Kabbalah Guru, and um, and I'll I'll send you. You know, I can download a uh, a copy of this tape. Great. Thanks, All brother. Right. Well, thanks so much, and uh, we'll see everybody later, 7.45, and thanks so much, John, and uh, we, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Likewise, brother. Thanks for having me. Thanks, okay. everybody. God bless. God bless.